Hi everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning in Finance. In the last video we've seen the k-nearest neighbor and the support vector machines and we now want to apply these to a data set of credit card customers and it's not a data set that is concerned about defaults which one could probably suspect when hearing the words credit card and uh, finance and classification application, but we actually want to predict customer churn. So we want to see which customers are more prone to cancel and terminate their contract and which aren't. The data can be downloaded at Kaggle. So if you um, go to this link here, um, you can find the data at Kaggle. You can also find various, usually Python notebooks that feature wide variety of different methods for um, actually doing this um, classification, not just k-nearest neighbor and support vector machines. However, here, because we've just seen those two models, we want to concentrate on those two. And with the support vector machines, we are going to use the support vector classifier, so the linear one, and one with a radial basis function kernel. We've already seen that on the previous slide in our script um, here we saw that the radial kernel, the radial basis function kernel, actually achieves a non-linear decision boundary, and this is probably better than the purely linear one. Um, what is in the motivation behind this application? Well, um, this is actually even more true in insurance management. Um, in insurance management, for example, if you think about car insurance, um, the contracts usually expire all after one year and then you have to renew your contract. It's usually in Germany at least it's renewed automatically if you do not cancel your uh, policy. However, if you cancel it and switch to a cheaper um, competitor, then obviously cancellation, cancellation rates are a major concern um, and a major input for the calculation of premiums in an insurance company. Same with the credit card customers here. So if you're the manager, you're concerned about the question whether an increasing fraction of your customers quit and terminate you know, their contracts. You want to slow this down because um, obviously this is bad for business and you're trying to use machine learning methods now, King, your neighbor and support vector machines to identify those features that are able to predict customer churn and uh, contract cancellation. However, she needs a prediction of who's going to terminate the contract. So this is what we're going to do here. This data set that is available at Kaggle contains information on more than almost 10,000 customers. We have features including age, salary, credit card limit, and other features and the data are unbalanced, meaning that only about 16% of the customers in the data set have actually canceled their um, contract. So 16% have canceled and 84% have remained with the credit card company. And this complicates training and interpretation of the predictive performance of the models, obviously. This would even be worse if only, let's say, two customers had canceled and 9,998 customers didn't cancel the contract. So this is a slight problem. We'll come back to this later. It might also be more favorable to contact a customer who is not about to churn than not cost, not contacting a customer who is. So um, the question is what, after having done the prediction and after having done the classification, what is the best way to move forward? Should we contact those customers that will are more likely to um, cancel their contracts or should we actually con um, concentrate on those ones that are close to cancellation or those uh, that will never um, cancel their contract um, in order to maximize our profits. In this lecture, our primary focus is on the models. We will therefore not specifically address the so-called class imbalance problem, meaning that only 16% have cancelled, 84% haven't. Um, but this is usually known as the class imbalance problem, and you can look this up in the literature and in textbooks. Now, for fitting the K and N model and the SVMs, as also as well as the elastic net model we've seen in the previous section, we will rely on the R package carrot by Kuhn 2020, and we will shortly introduce this package in more detail. We've already used it before, but here we are going to uh, talk a little bit more about this in detail. So carrot is just short for classification 
and regression trading. It summarizes activities related to model development in a very streamlined process, and it allows you to test different models with very little changes to the code. And we'll see this later on in the R code that we actually don't need to um, uh, write, uh, rewrite too much of the code in order to switch from one model to the next one. And it offers automatic cross validation and parameter queuing. Now this package provides a consistent modeling syntax. For example, by simply changing the method argument, you can easily change the underlying model from a k-nearest neighbor to SVM. And in total, it uh, gives you um, the possibility to use more than 200 different models from machine learning. Now note that behind the scenes, the package is not performing the modeling itself. Actually, it uses the standard methods from R. For example, if you use LM, it simply refers to the LM function from the stats package uh, to estimate a linear regression model. It only simplifies uh, the syntax. For k-nearest neighbors as well, it relies on the class package by Venables and Ripley. So it um, is rather a well, more convenient way of doing this in R rather than reinventing everything. And for a complete list of models, you can uh, go to this link here um, in the script and access the uh, documentation of Carrot. Now, as before, um, we need to import and pre-process the data first. And we're doing this um, by downloading the bank churner CSV from uh, Kaggle. You can see the link here. And then after having downloaded it to your computer, you need to import it in R. Um, we use the package read R and we read the CSV file into our um, into this object bank churners. Now, if you read the description at Kaggle, it's recommended to drop the last two columns, which are not needed. And so this is what we are doing in line six. Bank churners is uh, overwritten with bank churners, simply using the columns one, two, the number of columns bank churners has minus two. So we are dropping the last two columns. We then print those um, data, uh, the first seven observations, and you can see it's a tibble. It includes a client number, an attrition flag, the customer age, gender, and it has 17 more variables. So, um, and 10,000 uh, rows approximately. So we have 10,000 bank customers. And as you can see, two, four, five, or, um, so we have um, 22 features for the customers. Now, the variable description is also available from Kaggle. You can see, for example, client num, as is expected, is a unique identifier for the customer. Attrition flag is um, a flag that is one if the account has been closed and zero otherwise. So with zero, it's an existing customer. Uh, if it's one, it is a customer that has canceled his or her contract. Uh, the dependent count is the number of dependents, gender, age, etc. It's all self-explanatory. Um, we will do some explorative um, analysis. For example, we'll see if there are any missing values. So if you use any is.na on bank churners, um, you can check whether there is any uh, na not available. That's a data type um, in R. And if gives us false back, so we have no missing values. We can also check for any duplicates, uh, that's any and then duplicated on bank churners. Again, it comes out false, so we don't have any duplicates. To see the class imbalance, we uh, use a table of bank churners dollar attrition flag uh, divided by the number of rows, um, and then we um, round this up, and you can see we have attrited customer, 16% existing customer, 84%. So we can clearly see, yes, we have a class imbalance. We are not addressing this problem in our application, but yes, it is a problem and it can um, deteriorate the quality of our classification models later on. But um, this is a topic for another lecture. Now, um, we continue our explorative analysis. We analyze churning customers by age. We use the uh, package DPLYR. Um, what we do is we um, try to um, plot um, the attrition flag for some subsamples, for example, customer by customer age. Um, by, um, we can also do it by 
gender, etc. And this is a little bit complicated because the plots are meant uh, to look nice. And if you look on the next slide, you can see what comes out of this. You can see the percentages of attracting customers. And um, it starts at approximately, I would say, 12% for the customer age at 20. Then it goes up 30, 40, 50 years, and it steeply drops uh, for customer age 60 and 70. So we can see, yes, obviously age seems to have some influence on the uh, attrition flag. So it will probably be um, one of the predictors uh, that will stay in our models. Um, same here for customer education, college, doctorate, graduate, high school, postgraduate, uneducated, unknown. It seems there's at least if you have a doctorate, um, the uh, attrition flag um, and the percentage of attrition is much, much higher than for the rest of the education classes. So again, this might also be helpful later on in predicting customer churn. Now, um, we do have some categorical features. For example, customer education is a categorical feature and it cannot simply be encoded in a numeric variable as it is sometimes possible for ordinal variables. So for example, if you have um, rating scores, well, it's clear a score, let's say, of 50 is better than a score of 30. With categorical features, this is not possible because you cannot, you cannot really say that, for example, a doctorate it is twice as um, uh, good as a high school diploma. Yeah? So customer education might be encoded via uh, six binary dummy variables. However, this raises the dimensionality of the data significantly. If we do this for every categorical feature, then we will end up with a huge number of dummy variables. And this is an especially serious problem for non-parametric models like KN classification because of the curse of dimensionality. We are increasing and artificially increasing the dimensionality and the few observations we have. We have 10,000 observations, but in this context, this is rather uh, not too much. Um, the curse of dimensionality means that if you increase the dimensionality of your problem, uh, the a uh, fixed number of observations, of data observations you have, will at some point vanish in the huge space that is uh, your hyperdimensional space here. And for simplicity, we therefore drop all numeric variables. And in practice, you should obviously carefully decide for each categorical variable if it should be included or not. If we look at customer education, doctorate, seems to have um, an influence. So you might think about using a d one dummy variable that is one for doctorate and zero for all the other uh, classes. This might be a solution. Um, with H, you could split into two subsamples below 60 or below 50 and um, above 50. This might work. But if you were to include a dummy variable for each age uh, and each year, this would simply um, cause more problems than solve anything. Okay, now we then create the training and the test set. We remove all numeric features and the column client number. We don't need the client number, it has no predicted value. And we create the training and test set by randomly including 80% of observations in the training and 20% of observations in the test set. So this is what we will do. We again set seeds 2021 for reproducibility. Um, and then we split our um, data set into X train, um, X test, and Y train and Y test. Obviously, bank churners and the attrition flag in this case is our um, response variable. So we have our four data samples, the test and the training set, and this for the predictors and the response variable. Now, by default, K nearest neighbor is based on the Euclidean distance. And to ensure that all features contribute equally to the measured distances, um, we scale the data based on the minimum and maximum values. So we determine the per column minimum and the maximum. And then we scale all variables, for example, here, X train and X test. And we call this now X train scaled and X train scaled. Um, X train and X test scale. And what we do is um, we scale it so that it has, um, as we can see here, it has a minimum and a maximum of um, zero and one respectively. So all variables in the training set have a minimum of zero 
and a maximum of one, and it's uh, monotonously scaled in between. And as scaling is based on data from the training set, the same is not necessarily true for the test set. So you can see here, um, if we do this uh, for the test scaled uh, and the train scaled, it is slightly different. Okay. Now, in the next video, we'll start with the K nearest neighbor classification and then do support vector machines. But you can see that it takes some time to pre-process the data in order to be able to perform these models in the first place.